Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another MMATakeover.com interview. My name is Keith Schillen. Today's guest has an 18-5 and record, and he is a veteran of several organizations, including Bellator and Titan FC. He's on a four-fight winning streak, and will be making his USA debut on April 8th in Buffalo, New York at UFC 210 against Josh Emmett. Ladies and gentlemen, Desmond Green. Desmond, how are you, man? Hey, what's up, bro? What's up? Nineteen and five, by the way, too. Appreciate oh, it. I'm nineteen and five. Okay, <laughs> all right. Like, I'm already messing up. Nineteen. I was I was going straight off of tapology, so I'm gonna get on those guys. Uh, not, make, yeah, sure dog got the right one. <laughs> okay, so sure. Well, usually sure dog is the one who gets it wrong, and we go with tapology. But uh, okay, I'm gonna tell tell those people over at tapology. Hey, nineteen and five. Don't don't cheat this guy out of a win. You know what I mean? Yeah, I need everything I could get, baby. <laughs> so let me let me ask you a question because I've heard you've been introduced as Desmond Green. I've heard you've been introduced as Des Green. What do you prefer? Um, either one, whatever come off the tongue better. Okay. All my friends call me Tune, so neither one of those. You know what I mean? Whatever, whatever they want to call me, Desi, Desmond. Uh huh. No, would you say your your friends call you Tone? Tune, Tune. That's what I Tune. T O O N. That's what everybody called me. Okay. Or, or everybody that know me close. Okay, how'd you get that nickname? Uh, I love cartoons, man. Growing up, even as a kid, all I did was watch cartoons. Like, even when the Super Bowl was on, I was like, man, let's watch some Dragon Ball Z. And really? So it just kind of stuck. Yeah. Is that is that your favorite cartoon? Oh, yeah, 100%. Dragon Ball Z and Samurai Jack. That's all I watched growing up. Now, you didn't, you didn't skip this last Super Bowl to watch cartoons. I hope not, because that was a great Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was. It was a good one. But, uh, yeah. No, if, if they if they came out with some new DBZ, I probably would have. Oh <laughs> uh, no, yeah, we we uh, filming this in southern New England, so we definitely weren't going to miss that Super Bowl. Uh, so let's get right into it. How'd you yeah. get into MMA? Um, really, uh, when I was about in like ninth or tenth grade, my neighbor used to show me these Ultimate Fighting tapes. You know, back when it was on VHS, and you know, back when like they used to wear wrestling shoes or whatever in the cage, and uh, I was like, man, people get paid for this. Like, this is actually a sport, and uh, that's when I knew I wanted to do it. I was probably about in 10th grade. So um, I, I was a wrestler. So, you know, it was like wrestling to me was basically fighting without using your hands and your knees. So, you know, it just always intrigued me. Now, was there a certain fighter that you watched that you wanted to follow? Um, no, not really. Um, I really didn't even start watching fighting until, like, Maybe my freshman sophomore year in college, and I uh, became like a big George St. Pierre and Anderson Silva fan. Now you were a big wrestler in college. Uh, you wrestled for the University of Buffalo. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I wrestled there for uh, three out of four years. Um, was two-time MAC champion, over a hundred plus college wins. Uh, you know, freestyle American had a real good collegiate career, Division One. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is something that stands out. Obviously, the first thing that's mentioned about you is your wrestling. Um, but you have showed a lot of stand-up, um, especially your last fight. You were really landing on your, on your feet to set up your takedowns. Um, that was in Titan FC. So uh, talk about talk about the uh, the transition. You're down. Uh, you've been training with the Black Zillions, which is now called – or I shouldn't say now called, but there's the group of Black Zillions are working with the Comet Club, which you're a part of. Tell us how you hooked up with that team. Um, so, uh, I was training in Montreal last 2014, going into 15, and, uh, you know, I was up there for like 11 months training with TriStar, and, uh, at the time, my manager was, uh, Jeff Anson, Electric Man, and, uh, some things happened where I couldn't get back into Canada, and, you know, at first I just was coming down here for a visit. I was going to try to figure out, you know, which, which, uh, you know, what team I wanted to go to. They were friends with ATT and Black Zillion guys. And so, um, you know, Jeff Aaron says, hey, listen, I got a couple of gyms in South Florida you should check out. So uh, the first one I checked out happened to be the Black Zillions. And, um, you know, I bonded so good with the team, the coaches, and uh, Glenn Robinson. I ended up, you know, like basically canceling all the other meet and greets with other gyms. I was like, you know, I like it down here. I like this team. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much a wrap from there. Uh, just in case anybody who's listening at home doesn't know uh, who the Black Sillians, which is now called the uh, Combat Club under Henry Oof, um, there's a team of just absolute... Well, no, they're still, they're still the Black Sillians. No, the, the Black Sillians are still the team, and then there's the it, Combat Club. Okay, okay. Two different teams. And, that, and yeah. that's who you're rolling with now, right? The Combat Club? 
I'm, I'm with both. I'm with both. I do a little bit of training at the combat club, a little bit of training over at the Black Zillions. Okay. Uh, majority of my training is at the combat club, but you know, I still bounce back and forth between both. Is, is there and a lot of my main coach though? Yeah. Is there a lot of fighters doing that, bouncing back between the two? Yeah. Yeah. All right, just so people know, like the combat club, I mean, this is just absolute killers. Uh, Anthony Johnson, who's fighting in the main event, uh, the same card you're fighting in, Michael Johnson, Chaz Skelly, Andre Sukmata, who just made his debut. Um, you guys just brought, Oost, man. Yeah, you guys just brought in uh, uh, Robbie Lawler, who obviously a former UFC champion. He's been down there now with you guys. So, I mean, it's absolute killer. So tell us, what is the day like training at the combat club? Like, what does that consist of? Um, you know, we got 10 o'clock practice, team practice, um, depending on which day of the week. It'll be a different discipline. Monday's usually uh, wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Tuesday's spar, Wednesday's wrestling, Thursday's jiu-jitsu, and Friday's spar again. And then, uh, you know, two days a week we get with our – each person gets with our strength and conditioning coach. And then we also, uh, you know, holler at Henry Hu for a mid-session. Now, do you have a certain sparring partner you like to work with the most? Uh yeah, probably uh me and uh me and Michael Johnson get in the most work and uh, you know, Marquez and Jason Jackson, those three are getting in a lot of work with. Okay, yeah, I mean obviously training with a guy like Michael Johnson who obviously is ranked, I mean he's could be a champion in the UFC. That obviously must boost your confidence knowing that you can hang with someone on that level. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's definitely definitely good for my psyche going with guys that good but you know um you know it's part of the game i like to even the last gym i was at when i was at uh tri style you know i was going with high level guys so you know, it definitely definitely does make me better going with uh better guys uh so you've been called the predator who gave you that nickname um my friends really when i started fighting i used to braid my dreads back and like uh yeah, you yeah. know and they used to make me look like the predator and uh you know i got this savage nature about me so it just all fit so, I mean, you fought in Bellator. You had a long history in Titan FC. You were the featherweight champion. Uh, so now you finally got the call to the UFC. Uh, how did the call come in, and, and did you expect it? Like, was it something you said, hey, they're coming to Buffalo. I'm definitely getting that call. Um, I didn't expect it. We threw it out there. My uh, my manager, Glenn Robinson, he actually, uh, you know, he had a phone conference with Dana. And uh, at the time, Titan FC was trying to set me up to fight Freddie Asanto for the belt. Yeah. On the next card, and uh, you know, so the original pitch was going to be, you know, um, Dez is on a five, four or five win streak. Um, you know, he's got a great record, nineteen and five, twenty and five after he beats Freddie. He'll have the, you know, he's a tight featherweight champ. We're going to just try to sell after I won the belt um, against Freddie to sign me. And then you know, I was like, well, they got that Buffalo card. You know, let them know I'm from Rochester, which is an hour away. I went to college in Buffalo. He's always looking for a hometown guy. If you want to win that Buffalo card in April, you know, I'd be more than willing to. And, uh, you know, Dan and went with that one. So uh, it was exciting. I didn't I didn't really think. I thought he was just going to say, wait, and if he wins the belt against Freddie, we'll sign him. Um, you know, I was I was happy and ecstatic that he, uh, you know, they was like, yeah, we'll take him in Buffalo. So you said you're going to fight in Buffalo. It's where you went to college, not far from where you grew up. Um, how many of your friends and family going to be there? Do you know? Uh, yeah, a lot more than I could count. Yeah. <laughs> just a lot. I know that. Yeah. yeah. How how many people are calling you up? I'm sure you're probably getting calls daily saying, "Hey man, can you hook me up with any tickets? Anything like that?" Yeah, yeah, a lot. A whole bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it was more than I could count. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love it. You know what I mean? I love the support. I love it. You know what I mean? I, I use it's motivation for me. So obviously, you know, you've been a veteran of sport. You're not one of these guys making the debut younger than sport. You've been around for a while. Obviously, you fought at a huge level. I mean, Bellator is right up there with the UFC. So the, I don't think you're really going to get those jitters that a lot of other less experienced fighters have. But let's talk about just fighting in front of the hometown crowd. Are you one of these guys who likes that, likes having the crowd there, cheering you on, having so many people there? Or do you feel like it's more pressure to perform in front of friends and family? No, um, it's motivation. Uh, I love it. I love being under the spotlight. Uh, you know, for me, I've always, I've always did better when I got family and friends around me. So, you know, the fact that I'll be fighting so close to home and then in the town that I went to college at, you yeah. know, it's just gonna, it's just gonna be more fuel to my fire. Okay, now let's talk about your opponent, Josh Emmett. I mean, 
I'm not going to lie, I've been very impressed with him. He's a very good fighter. He's undefeated. Uh, he's 11-0. and He's 2-0 and in the UFC. Uh, what weaknesses have you seen in his game that you think you can exploit? Um, he's, uh, he doesn't follow up. You know, he swings one punch at a time, doesn't really combo. Um, you know, he's shorter than me. He has less reach. So, you know, I think it's a great matchup for me. Okay. Now, you've mentioned earlier in the, in the interview that you have you were the featherweight champion. Um, obviously, you have, this fight is at lightweight. Is there any plans to move back to featherweight, or is lightweight your permanent weight class? No, yeah, lightweight's my permanent weight class. Um, I was getting too big for featherweight. Okay. I never go there again. Okay. So as we're taping this right now, it's March 24th, uh, exactly two weeks before your weigh-ins. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what is your current walk-around weight? Mm, about 163. Okay. Oh, so you're actually pretty light. I mean, you don't have that much of a cut to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I like 155. I don't got to kill myself. My cans are fine. I could grow into the weight class. Yeah, do you feel stronger at 155? Yeah, definitely stronger, more energy, more healthy, everything. Um, I mean, you mentioned. I mean, you got a couple of teammates fighting this one. One is Cameroon uh, Usman. He he trains with you. He's fighting Sean Strickland on the card. How's he looking in camp right now? Uh, he's looking great, real good. Everybody's sharp, on point. We got a bunch of hungry dogs. Do you, you got a prediction for his fight? For his fight? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to win, get a finish. I think Anthony Rumble's going to get a finish. I'm going to get a finish. We're going to get a clean sweep, 3-0. and Okay, so so Anthony, obviously that's the big fight of the night. It's the main event. Um, obviously it's something that I'm sure you want to aspire to to be in the main event one day. Um, Anthony, he lost his first fight against Daniel Cormier. Um, obviously he's making an adjustment. He's, I mean, he's an absolute killer. I say it every time. I've, I've been watching MMA for 22 years. I started at UFC 6. I mean, uh before some guys, before Sage Northcott was born, I was watching MMA. Mm-hmm. And, and there is more accomplished strikers in the history of, of MMA, but I've never been more scared by anybody striking than, than Anthony Johnson. It's it's unbelievable. He When he hits guys, it's scary. It's scary what happens. I mean, when he hit Glover Teixeira, I thought he died. <laughs> you know, it was that scary. So, yeah, um, and knocked his tooth out of his head. Yeah, I mean, I mean and Glover Teixeira, it was not one of these guys who – who's been dropped and been hurt a lot. I mean, he's a guy that, I mean, he went yeah. five rounds with John Jones. I mean, he's he's been in the wars against guys. So, obviously, you're predicting Anthony to win. Do you think he takes him out in the first round? Think he's going to go a little deeper? What, what's your prediction? Yeah, I think, I think he's going to he's gonna end in the first or the second round. Okay. So, now let's talk about your fight. What's your prediction for your fight? Um, definitely going to finish him. Um, I'm thinking... Uh, Honestly, probably a first round finish. Um, I'm gonna go out there and just overwhelm them with just you know my striking and my wrestling, and uh, then we get a TKO. Okay, now you knock out. Okay, now you're you're obviously an accomplished wrestler. He's an accomplished wrestler. Uh, do you think you can out wrestle him? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, if you just look at our accomplishments on paper, they speak for themselves. So, I'm not really worried about his wrestling at all. All right, so. You know, obviously, you win the fight. They're gonna ask you, "Who do you want next?" Are you, are you anybody in your radar? You're looking at? Uh, no, not at all. You know, it's my first fight in there, so um, I just want somebody that's higher ranked than the last guy I beat, and the next guy to be better than the last guy. And you know, I just want to keep climbing the ranks like that. And uh, you know, sooner or later, you know, I'll be calling out those top ten guys, top five, and then get the belt. I mean, this is. I mean, this is a pretty good card. Um, it's your fight against. Josh is obviously one that I'm circling. It's definitely one that the lightweight division should be circling. Obviously, you have great experience. He has, I mean, undisputed record. The winner of this fight definitely is going to get an even higher step up in competition. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm actually going to be there live. I'm driving up um, from southern New England. I'm with, uh, me and a friend's going up there. So I can't wait to see it. Uh, so my last question to you, Desmond, is have you submitted to the takeover? Uh, hey, it's Desmond the Predator Green, and I have submitted to the to MMA takeover. Uh, Desmond, we thank you for coming on. All of our listeners appreciate it. We wish you luck in your fight against Josh and all future fights, and welcome to the MMA takeover family. I appreciate it, guys. You have a good one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was our interview with Desmond Green. Make sure you check out his fight against Josh Emmett at UFC 210 on...
Saturday, April 8th on Fight Pass. You can also head over to our website to receive all the best coverage. Our website is TheMMATakeover.com. That's TheMMATakeover.com. You can also follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for listening.